Stone TV Fox News at 8. Are the Florida results in? Also, get the results in Clarion County's elections. And get your latest weather watch forecast. All this and more next, right here on Clarion's very own TV 5 News at 8. November 8th. Good evening. I'm Carolyn Kelly. And I'm Carrie LePou. Here's a look at some of the stories we are covering for you in the next half hour. A victory for the First Lady. Find out those details coming up. Also, Borough Council had their monthly meeting. Lori Tillo will have a recap. And of course, Courtney Mains will be in with your weather forecast. All this and more tonight on Clarion's very own TV5 News at 8. Moving on to the big story of the week, the presidential election. At this point in time, Vice President Al Gore is ahead with 51% of the popular vote, with Texas Governor George W. Bush behind with 46% of the vote. But how much do these numbers mean? The winner of this race will be determined by electoral vote. And with the race so close, the Florida's 25 electoral votes will make the difference in which candidate will be the next president. Stay with TV5 News for an update on Florida's electoral vote. And in Pennsylvania elections, freshman Senator Rick Santorum fought back a challenge Tuesday from U.S. Representative Ron Klink. With 99% of the state's precincts reporting, Santorum had 52% to Klink's 45%. Exit polls showed that Santorum did least well among voters over 60. He only won 50% of the vote among that group. Santorum is now seeking the number three position in his party's leadership. He could now help set the party's agenda and become a more visible spokesman. Mary Jo White will now hold her second four-year term in the Pennsylvania Senate. White, a Republican who won her first term in 1996, says she's really looking forward to a second term. She feels it is a good job she was meant for. High on her agenda for the coming term is meaningful tax reform. White defeated Libertarian Vernon Etzel. U.S. Representative John Peterson also retained his seat in the U.S. House. Also in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania row office races each incumbent won. In the Attorney General's race, incumbent Mike Fisher will return his seat. Bob Casey Jr. will retain his seat as Auditor General, and Barbara Hafer will retain her seat at State Treasurer, narrowly defeating her Democratic challenger, Catherine Baker Knoll. Now to take a look at how Clarion County voted, our Mark Desitakis joins us live from the Satellite Center with a look. Thanks, Carolyn. We are here in the Satellite Center taking a look at how Clarion County voted. Now, obviously, uh, you know, it all matters in the grand scheme of things, but we thought we'd break it down and show you just how things went in Clarion County. First of all, let's take a look at these numbers here. Uh, voter turnout yesterday was, you know, was talked about a lot. How was voter turnout going to be? And across the country, they said it was pretty good. Well, here in Clarion County, it was 71%. Now, this afternoon, I called the voter registration office to ask them, you know, what the turnout was, and they said, but here's some interesting information for you. This is actually one of the lowest voter turnouts for a presidential election in Clarion. As you can see, in 1996, there was a 75% turnout. In 92, uh, very high with 85% turnout, and back in 1998, 
there was, 1988, excuse me, there was a 78 percent turnout. Uh, let's move on to see how Clarion County voted for the president. As expected, they voted for George W. Bush the most with 62 percent. Uh, as you know, as you may know, the uh, Registration here in Clarion County is heavily Democrat, uh, heavily Republican. Excuse me. Moving on to the U.S. Senate race, the same thing happened. Rick Santorum receiving 62 percent of the vote there. And looking at some of the local races, uh, there's three of them on the screen. They're kind of small, so you might want to get close to your TV here. Uh, in the Senate 21st district, Mary Jo White received 85 percent. The incumbent there over Vernon Etzel. And uh, District 5 for the United States Congress, John Peterson received 85 percent of the vote. And District 12. Uh, John Murtha won there. So all three incumbents won those races. So uh, in Clarion County, it was almost as expected for all of these races. So not, not too many surprises from Clarion County. We'll, we'll have to see now what happens in the presidential race. We're uh, actually up here monitoring right now to see what's going on in Florida. It looks like we are going to hear about those electoral votes for president tomorrow. So for now, reporting live from the Satellite Center, I'm Mark Despotakis. Back to you, Carolyn and Carrie. Thanks, Mark. First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton walked away with a victory in New York Senate Tuesday night. She became the first First Lady to ascend to any elected office and the first woman to win statewide in New York. Exit polls indicated that Clinton won handily among female voters, 58% to 41%, while sweeping up a stunning 89% of the black vote. The First Lady also won big with college graduates, union members, parents with children, and every major age group except those over 60, which split down the middle. Mrs. Clinton will be sworn in on January 3rd. A group of local people are preparing to build an eight-mile section of the North Country Trail along the Clarion River in Highland Township. When it's done, the hiking trail will be the longest in the country. Bob Tate, Pennsylvania coordinator for the North County Trail Association, spoke to a small group of residents about recruiting more members and electing new officials early next year. Information on the trail can be found on the NCTA's website at www.northcountrytrail.org. The monthly borough council meeting was last night, and TV5's Laura Kila was there, and this is the report. Now the fall has come, things are slowing down in Clarion Borough. The issue still arose at last night's Clarion Borough Council meeting. Buses blocking vehicles on 4th Avenue is just one solved traffic issue. Speeding traffic on Robinwood Street will result in placing a stop sign on the corner of Robinwood and Crescent Streets for a 90-day trial period. Also, problems currently exist with owners not paying rental unit license on time or at all, violating the ordinance. Proposed changes will be discussed at December's meeting. Even though this was a short meeting this month, the Borough Council is prepared for issues to be discussed in upcoming months. In Clarion, I'm Lori Killa, TV5 News. Thanks, Lori. Up next, if you have children, we have an important recall for you. Find out those details. And find the week's weather from our Courtney Mains. Stay with us. Know if that girl go out with him, pass it down. Hey, Grandma has to go along the end if she wants to go out with this loner. The young man wants to know if the girl over there is a donor. Somebody wants to know if you're an organ and tissue donor. Yes. Hey, me too. <laughs> Are you a donor? Make sure your family knows your decision so there's no question later.
Pennsylvania senior U.S. Senator says the presidential election is proof it's time for the Electoral College to go. Our inspector says he plans to offer a constitutional amendment next week. The Republican Senator said even though the Electoral College would seem to favor George W. Bush, it's time to amend the Constitution to allow for direct election of the president. One of the classic arguments against such a move is that small population states would be ignored as candidates spent all their time going for the big prizes. A big clothing recall to tell you about, the Sara Lee Underwear Company is issuing a voluntary recall of some baby apparel items. The company says a decal could flake after washing and particles could cause choking or discomfort if swallowed. Being recalled are a union suit, a receiving blanket, and a terry cloth hooded towel, all having puff decals. The company offers either a refund or coupons for other apparel for return of these items. The deadline to sign up to bid on large items at Three River Stadium is coming up this Friday. Online auctioneer Free Markets, which is based in Pittsburgh, will handle the November 17th auction for such things as scoreboards, lights, and the Sony Jumbotron at the stadium. Three River Stadium will be demolished early next year as the Pittsburgh Steelers and Pirates look forward to new separate facilities opening in 2001. Police are still searching for a Portsmouth, Virginia man who's wanted in the murder of his ex-boss. Norfolk police say Joseph Ludman killed the manager of a first union securities office yesterday. Lud Ludman allegedly killed Timothy O'Shaughnessy and then fled in the victim's car. Coming up, a look at some health news and Courtney Mains will be in with your weather forecast. But first, here's a look at tonight's Pennsylvania winning lottery numbers. possible through a grant by the Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant. The Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant is located at 540 Main Street in Clarion and offers dining as well as a nightclub. The restaurant and nightclub are open seven days a week for your convenience. Call the Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant 226-8400. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by Fox's Pizza Den. Fox's Pizza Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone 226-5555. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by The Carpet Barn. The Carpet Barn is located at 470 South 5th Avenue in Clarion. The Carpet Barn is open Monday through Saturday for all your carpet needs. So call The Carpet Barn, 226-7332. A popular fitness program is shaping up to be an affordable way for people to get a good workout. Once offered only at select facilities and at prices up to $100 per session, the Pilots Method has been used by movie stars and other celebrities for years. Now Bally to Total Fitness and its affiliates are offering a less expensive version of the program, which is designed to elongate and flex the body to increase agility and to relieve stress through fluid and natural movement. For more information on this program and where it's available, contact Bally Total Fitness at 1-800-FITNESS. While over 30% of the U.S. population is overweight, for some, a way to lose weight may be right under their noses. A recent study in the Journal for Advancement in Medicine said inhaling certain scents before eating resulted in an average weight loss of 19 pounds in four months. The theory is the specially formulated fruity aromas that cause the body to believe it has already eaten. This makes a person feel full, so he or she eats less. The researchers are seeking participants who are at least 10 pounds overweight and have a good sense of smell. The study supplies the pen-like aromatherapy products for each participant. To see if you qualify, call 1877 md study 
The trial of a former suburban Pittsburgh district justice has been postponed until tomorrow. Gigi Sullivan was slated to face trial today in Allegheny County Court on charges of giving legal favors and protection to alleged drug dealer in exchange for heroin, cocaine, and prescription drugs. Sullivan was formally charged with corruption, bribery, forgery, theft, obstruction justice, hindering prosecution, and drug charges. Well, Courtney, I had to pull up my umbrella again today because of the rain. Am I going to expect to have to see this again this week? Well, there's a possibility of it tomorrow again, so you might need to pack it again. Let's take a look at the maps and see what the rest of the week has in store for us. Taking a look at today's satellite map, as clouds continue to make their way across the Great Plains into our region, we had more gray skies and even a shower or two this afternoon. Moving on to today's temperature map, it's considerably cold off this today across much of the west and midwest, so they're down into the low 20s. But as we push further east into sections of the southwest, southeast, they warmed up into the low 80s today, with Pennsylvania and its neighbors to the north into the low 60s. Now taking a look ahead at tomorrow's precipitation map, again, areas out in the northwestern corner, they can look forward to some snowfall again tomorrow. And as we push further east, Great Plains pushing all the way into the east can look forward to some rain showers tomorrow. And finally, taking a look ahead to tomorrow's front map, a stationary front is going to be affecting our region tomorrow, which is basically going to bring us the same temperatures and the same weather. But with the low pressure system behind it, there's a slight chance we might see rain again tomorrow. And finally, taking a look at your five-day forecast. Today, we saw partly cloudy skies with a high of 63 and a low of 43. Thursday, we can see rain showers with a high of 59 and a low of 46. Friday, rain showers again with a high of 52 and a low of 41. On Saturday, partly cloudy skies with a high of 50 and a low of 36. And on Sunday, partly cloudy skies with a high of 52 and a low of 32. So maybe we should plan on doing something indoors this weekend. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be that great of a weekend. All right, thanks, Courtney. Coming up after the break, Ben Thompson joins us with sports. But first, let's take a look at this stock.
So then, do you have any basketball news for us tonight? A little bit of basketball, a little bit of hockey, a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of everything in sports tonight. <laughs> well, let's get started. So today is Wednesday, and in the NFL, that means all the football teams hold a press conference to say who will be sitting out Sunday's game due to injury. In the Steelers' case, they will be missing two players. Running back Chris Fuamatu Mahafala will sit out the next two games with a broken foot. Mahafala has already missed two games with this injury. Along with Mahafala will be Pro Bowl center Dimitri Dawson, who has a right hamstring injury. Making his first start at Three Rivers in almost 11 months will be quarterback Cordell Stewart as the Steelers face the Eagles on Sunday. Another Philadelphia team will be traveling to Pittsburgh as the Pens face the Flyers tonight at the Igloo. Injuries will also play a big part in this game as the Flyers are missing star forwards John LeClaire, Mark Recchi, Keith Jones, and still no Eric Lindros due to his concussion. The Pens are one point from first place and they believe they can take two tonight from the struggling Flyers. The Pens are 3-0, 3-3-0 at Mellon Arena and they will be wearing their new alternate jersey. That didn't bring them much luck the last time they wore it in a 9-0 loss to the New Jersey Devils. The puck dropped at, not, at 7 tonight. There are also seven other games taking place tonight in the NHL. In last night's NBA action, Toronto, the Knicks, Houston, Washington, Phoenix, and Portland all racked up wins. Tonight, the three remaining undefeated teams will all see action. The strange thing is that none of these three teams advanced in the playoffs last year. They are the 76ers, Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Utah Jazz. All have not been beaten. The Jazz and Sixers are 4-0. Cleveland is 3-0. Jazz play the 1-3 LA Clippers. The Cavs will play the 2-1 Knicks. And the 76ers play at home as they face the 1-3 Pistons. Sixteen other teams will square off tonight. The game to watch, though, will be the Lakers at San Antonio. Both teams are trying to prove that they are the team to beat in the West. Tip-off for that game is 8.30. On to boxing news. Lennox Lewis is putting his heavyweight championship of the world on the line when he faces David Tua in a 12-round contest Saturday in Las Vegas. Tua is a Samoan who has racked up 37-1 uh, and one record with 32 KOs. Lewis has a similar 37-1-1 one one record with 29 knockouts. Lewis has the advantage with an 84-inch reach to a 69-inch reach. The contest can be seen only on pay-per-view for just $44.95. The Clarion University Golden Eagles football team claimed their share of the PSAC West title when they defeated Lock Haven last weekend. This Saturday is the Golden Eagles' last game of the season. And if you haven't gotten a chance to see our team in action, you should come on to cheer them. West Chester Clock and Memorial Day. On the mats, the Golden Eagles wrestling season kicks off tonight with their annual inter-squad match. The blue and gold match started at 7 tonight, so if you hurry, you still could catch some of the action at Tip and Jim. The official opener for wrestling season is this Saturday in Ashland. In high school news, the Clarion area Bobcats have advanced the second round of the D10, D9 playoffs. The Bobcats defeated Kane due largely in part to the running of junior Kyle Cathcart. Cathcart scored three times in the game and racked up 86 rushing yards. Cathcart isn't one to pat his own back for his accomplishments this year, in which he has racked up over 1,000 yards rushing. He gives thanks to the talented offensive line that has pushed the Bobcats to over 3,500 yards this season. The line gives credit to their coach, Alex Arth, saying he is the reason the, they work so hard. No matter what the source is, one thing can be, cannot be disputed. The Cats are 10-0, and and they will face Kerwinsville Friday night in the second round of D9 playoffs. And that's sports. Now back to Carrie and Carolyn. Thanks, Ben. Joy Strain will be in for Jessica Curry this evening with a look at what's happening in Hollywood. Good evening, and welcome to Entertainment Beat. The stork is out and about and making his way through the stars. Comedian Jerry Seinfeld's wife gave birth yesterday to the couple's first child, a daughter named Sasha. The baby was born at an undisclosed hospital in New York City, publicist Elizabeth Clark said. 
She declined to comment further, except to say both mother and baby are doing great. The syndicated TV show Access Hollywood reported that Daddy Seinfeld was at his wife's side when she delivered. The 46-year-old comic and his wife Jessica, who is only 29, a public relations consultant for Fashion House Tommy Hilfiger, were married on December 25, 1999. Will Smith and wife Jada have a new addition to their family, a 6-pound, 10-ounce baby girl. Jada Pinkett Smith gave birth last Tuesday to Willow Camille Rain Smith, the couple's publicist said on Thursday. The couple already have a son, and the actor has another son from a previous marriage. Will Smith is currently appearing in the film The Legend of Bagger Vance. Guys and girls, both Carson Daly and Tara Reid are off the market. The VJ teen heartthrob Daly proposed to his girlfriend of eight months, Tara Reid from American Pie, Sunday in New York City where the couple share an apartment. It's definitely a high for Daly's well-publicized love life, which bottomed out last September when Jennifer Love Hewitt, his girlfriend of more than a year, told Howard Stern on the radio that they had split before telling Daly. Ouch. His wounds were healed this February when he met Reed, who was making an appearance in Cancun, Mexico for MTV's Spring Break special. Despite his vows to never date another actress, the two quickly fell in love over margaritas. Doesn't everyone? I went there not looking for anything, Daly told People Magazine in August. Tara went home to L.A. for the Academy Awards, returned to New York City the next day, and hasn't left since. That's all the gossip buzzing around Hollywood this week. For Entertainment Beat, I'm Joy Strain, TV5 News. Voters in Southern California had a chance yesterday to reach out and touch the candidates. It was all part of bringing the voting process into the 21st century. Instead of pulling levers or marking paper ballots, voters in Riverside County made their selections on a computer touch screen. It's the first time the high-tech balloting has been used in such a large scale. Well, that's all for Clarion's very own TV5 News at 8. I'm Carolyn Kelly. And I'm Carrie LeFou. Have a good week. Copyright 2000, TV5 News. Hi, I'm Mark Despotakis, and I would like to invite you to a first-of-its-kind event to be held here at TV5, the Clarion Town Meeting. We are asking you to participate in a town hall meeting with local community leaders, including the Clarion County Commissioners. Do you have questions or issues that you would like to see addressed? If so, then this meeting is for you. We will take the meeting on Thursday, November 30th at 7 p.m. here in the TV5 studios. If you would like to participate, call us at 393-2398. Hurry because seats may fill up quickly. Join us for a Clarion Town meeting right here at TV5.